Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 14th of June, dealing with a controversial topic of childhood of vaccination. In the UK, for 5 to 11-year-olds, we're recommending two vaccine doses, but it's more of an advisory recommendation. In the United States, it's a much stronger recommendation, and they're recommending three doses. Now, I don't like to keep people hanging around on these videos if they don't want to watch, but there are question marks, particularly over that third dose. And uh, the evidence that I've found personally for it is limited. And we don't seem to have a lot of long-term follow-up safety data, which I would like to see, given that we are giving these vaccines to uh, healthy children. And on a completely separate topic, we'll be looking at, this, looking at the fact that there's huge amounts of money uh, involved in vaccines, and we'll be giving some figures on that. So straight down to the detail on this now. Um, COVID vaccination recommendations for children and teens. This is CDC. What you need to know, and this is directly from the CDC website, recommends everyone age five and over. So everyone recommends everyone age five and over get vaccinated against COVID-19. Everyone age five years and older should, notice the word should, should also get a booster that's the third dose. So they should get a booster. Not recommended, not a possibility, should get a booster. And the booster should occur at least five months after the primary course. Now, they don't say what's going to happen after that. Um, seriously, I don't think anyone could be say, could could anyone be saying that you should have a booster every six months for all the children in the United States? Anyway, there's the evidence for that. I'm going to flag the evidence up as we go along. So that is the evidence for that uh, group of statements there and it's all uh, it's all in there and some of it's in these uh, sublinks if you uh, want to take the time to look through make sure what I'm saying is correct now moving on to the situation in the United Kingdom uh, we have the group of Joint Committee of Vaccination and Immunisation I've left the hyperlink there in the uh, description if you want to click on it advise that all children aged 5 to 11 are offered the coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine now, I'll just give you some of my evidence that I've been using here. Uh, that's uh, this website here from the National Health Service. Uh, this one here, I believe, is the Scottish uh, version, saying basically the same thing. And this is the, uh, the JVCI statement uh, there. So that's where this evidence has come from. And I've really taken a lot, because I know this is a difficult, controversial topic. I've really taken a lot of uh, effort uh, to only say what is in the evidence that I'm presenting. Now, I might not always get, get it 100% right, but I've, I've tried to do that. Just trying to say what these expert uh, bodies are saying. Not saying I agree with them, just saying what they're saying. Um, UK, uh, 5 million children aged 5 to 11. I think it was 24 million in the States. So uh, 5 million in the UK. Children aged uh, 5 to 11 will be offered two doses. Now, remember the United States, it was three doses. So there's a difference here. And the JVC um, advises a non-urgent offer. So this is non-urgent as opposed to the should from the uh, Centers for Disease Control. So we see a definite difference in tone here. You almost feel like the, the JVCI is doing this. Um, uh, I don't want to put words in the mouth. I don't want to say reluctantly, but there certainly is an urgent offer. Whereas the CDC are saying should, and they seem to be pushing it much more strongly. And yet both bodies have exactly the same evidence to draw from. So interesting difference in tone. So non-urgent offer of uh, two doses, um, Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. The Pfizer one is the only one that's being used in the youngest age groups at the moment. Uh, to children aged 5 to 11, um, even if they're not in a clinical risk group. So that is what they're both saying. Now, neither, uh, none of these reports seem to mention a lot about natural immunity. Now, just for the sake of people that are on uh, senior advisory uh, bodies in the CDC, who might not understand this, um, at least there's no evidence that they understand this because they talk about vaccine immunity and not a lot about, uh, not at all really, about uh, the, the, the advisory bodies. I haven't come across them talking about natural immunity. So I'll explain it what it is for them. It's immunity, immunity that occurs naturally when we are exposed to an antigen. As we have for hundreds of other bacteria, thousands of other viruses, we develop natural immunity. 
this natural immunity starts when before I was born antibodies from my mother's placenta came into my circulation to protect me as I was born antibodies that my mother had made as a response to exposure to natural antigens it's a natural immune process so um the rest of you understand that already but it's I'm just saying that for the sake of these uh, serious senior advisory officials uh, because they don't seem to know about it now this is the study from um this is the study next study we're on this one here uh, zero prevalence of, of infection induced SARS coronavirus to antibodies in the United States only going up to February 2022 now this is a this is a different part of the CDC that advises on the vaccination as far as I can tell uh, and they're looking for uh, anti n anti nucleocapsid uh, antibodies these are antibodies that are generated when the uh, immune system is exposed to the core of the virus the 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 uh, the anti n antibody the nucleocapsid antibody is actually associated with the the rna in the heart of the virus so it doesn't come from the vaccine we know these people have had natural infection. As of February 22, which really was only the start of the Omicron, we know there's been massive infections since then. 75% of children and adolescents had serological evidence of previous infection, not vaccination, uh, infection. 75%. And can now could we say it's 95%? Well, we, we can't say anything because we don't know. But uh, it'll certainly be more, a lot more than 75%. I think that's pretty certain. And a third of those became zero positive since December 2021. 20, uh, so this is an accelerating process. Uh, these findings illustrate that a high infection rate for the Omicron variant, especially among children. So there's been very high infection rates of Omicron amongst children. And this, I haven't commented on this because the video would go on too long. But that's actually the Pfizer report that is not is is talking about. Let's say that. Let's put it that way talking about uh, vaccination for under fives but that's not the topic of this video now um next uh, evidence here the uk percentage of population estimated to have antibodies was higher for children in great britain again very high antibody levels uh, in children in the uk now some of this is as a result of vaccine but in, in the younger age groups in the uk it's the vast majority of it is is as a result of natural infection so again, we have huge natural infection if any of the senior people from the CDC are taking notes. Very high levels of natural infection. And this evidence uh, here comes from the um, Office for National Statistics in the UK. An excellent site. Do click on it. This is uh, on the bit uh, on... Uh, oh, it's there. It's, it's definitely there. I'll put the graphics there. I don't want to waste time scrolling through it all. Um, so antibodies against SARS coronavirus 2 at or above the 179 nanograms per milliliter. In other words, there's quite a lot of them uh, in the UK. And this is the 29th of November 2021 to the 15th of May 2022. So fairly up to date. And here we see 8 to 11 year olds. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty high, isn't it? It's 94.6% uh, uh, of them tested positive for antibodies now regrettably uh some might say uh, inexplicably the office for national statistics unlike that cdc report that we looked at does not break this down into natural immunity and vaccine acquired immunity good question for the ons they haven't got back to me on that why haven't they done this um strange so eight to elevens very high levels of immunity one way or the other and i would suspect the vast majority of these are from natural uh, infection and then moving on to the slightly older age group in the uk 12 to 15 year olds again it's 95.5 uh, percent so pretty high levels uh, of immunity or um, presence of antibodies 95.5 percent uh, of the 12 to 15 year old age groups i would count that as pretty high and the office for national statistics always uh, also say um testing negative means that an individual did not have enough antibodies to detect in the test not that they do not have any immune protection against the virus and people that have had the natural immunity have had the natural infection of course as well as generating the antibody response which is all well and good but short-lived 
it will also have stimulated their B and their T memory lymphocytes, which will be around for at least a, a period of time. We still don't know exactly how long. Seems to carry on protecting against severe disease and uh, death uh, substantially for quite long periods of time. Uh, now, next piece of evidence is from this site here, which is the Pfizer press release site. Now, we have a very scientific looking um, photograph there. I don't know what it is. I don't think it says, but it looks scientific. And then we have the information here from the Pfizer site. And again, I want to sort of summarize uh, what this is saying. So this is Pfizer talking about booster doses and uh, the evidence that they're giving. Uh, now, this was published on Thursday, the 14th of April, 2022. So we see that we, even before this date and after this date, we haven't had a long time to uh, accumulate safety efficacy uh, of this virus. So the time is limited. But obviously, if this was a, a trial where advisory bodies go on to recommend uh, vaccinating 24 million healthy children, we would expect this trial to be immensely robust. Huge numbers, immensely robust trial. Let's have a look at it. Uh, date, oh, sub-analysis of 30 children's sera. Seriously, the end there is 30. That's what this paper says. It is not me making it up. It, it's there, look, it's there. Ch click on the paper for yourself. It's, I, I, if you experience a sense of incredulity uh, that they're actually publishing this with 30 patients, then uh, I also experience it. Uh, clinical trial of children through 5 through 11. A very high 36-fold uh, increase in SARS coronavirus 2. Omicron neutralizing teeters following a booster, following a third dose. Remember, this is the third dose. Now, the thing about the antibodies is um, they're short-lived. And the antibody teeters themselves are not telling us anything about the B and the T cell response, which is the greater and more important long-lived response. The antibodies will be limited and their numbers will go down quickly. So quite how useful that 36-fold increase is in the short term, I'd imagine it's useful. Long term, I don't think it tells us too much, really. Um, anyway, the next part of the study, oh, this was only 140 children as well. So this is this is not me making this up. That the N here equals 140. Is that what the CDC are basing their data on? CDC, get in touch with me and tell me this isn't what you're basing your recommendations on, please. Um, but there it is on the screen. There, 140 children. Um, look it up. Uh, look up the reference for yourself. Um, see if I'm appallingly misunderstanding this. But it's reading it straight off the paper. So. A neutralizing third dose increase, neutralizing antibodies by sixfold uh, against uh, wild type strain. And again, the study 140. So data from 30 for the Omicron, which we have now data from 140 for the wild type strain. And to be fair, Pfizer aren't making any bold claims about this themselves. They're just reporting that data. It's the... Uh, the CDC committees that have seemed to pick this up and run with it, unless they've got other data that I um, haven't come across. But I haven't come across any clinical trials on this. Uh, and I have looked. <laughs> um, oh, completely separate topic now. Uh, cost of Pfizer vaccine for 5 to 11-year-olds. I couldn't find it. Now, if you can find this, and I did spend about well, over half an hour looking for it, if you can find the cost of the Pfizer vaccine in the ch childhood dose, the 5 to 11 year old dose, do let me know because I couldn't find it. So I'm going on. The figures I've got here are for the um, the uh, the adult dose of vaccine because I can't find the children's one. Now, if it's there, if it's there, please do let me know um, and I'll report back if it is there. But I couldn't see it. Right. European Union price, uh, twenty three dollars, 15 cents a dose. US $24 a dose. Uh, so the UK with 5 million children will cost £115 million pounds per single dose. Uh, for the primary course, um, it would cost uh, $231 million. That's a lot of money. The UK at the moment are not advising the third dose. 
So we could actually, uh, they're not advising the third dose at the moment, but that, that would be that kind of money there if they were giving three doses. But they're not, so we'll leave that, uh, for now, we'll leave that at the, uh, the $231 million. Uh, assuming uh, the children's dose is sold for the same price as the adult dose, which you may correct me on. If, if it is, I'll report back. Huge amounts of money. United States, 24 million children in that age bracket. Uh, that would be uh, just over half a billion dollars for a vaccine each. Um, $1.152 billion for a primary course. And with a third dose, $1.728 billion. Now, no, no one's saying a billion dollars or, or more is going to influence decision making. But um, it's a separate topic and it is. it just shows there's a lot of money uh, involved here. Now, um, now, the pricing there was from uh, this this uh, article uh, here. Uh, in uh, when was that published? In um, the, oh, there we go. Um, Pharmaceutical Technology um, published uh, there. Um, greater transparency of the costing would be uh, always nice, but that's what we have, and there seems to be different prices around the world. So, quite an interesting article. Now, the last thing I want to talk about today is um, there's a now I'm not familiar with Newsweek, but here's here's the uh, article they've got here. Uh, this chap here works for a medical school called uh, Johns Hopkins School of uh, Medicine. So let's have a look at briefly what this is, what this is saying. It does throw up some points for discussion. It's not a scientific paper. It's a discussion article. Uh, but this is uh, Professor uh, McCarry. Johns Hopkins. Um, now, in this article, he says the CDC uh, vigorously recommends. Vigorously. I don't, how, do you, how do you vigorously recommend? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. As I say, this is just from the these popular press articles, so um, I can't give any uh, further detail on that. But it is there. It's this one's in the public domain. You can um, you can just go and have a read through and see what uh, you make of it vigorously recommends it. <laughs> it's a curious turn of phrase you know i don't recommend this i vigorously recommend vigorously recommend this make of that what you will sharp, sharp contrast to the uk um phraseology which was um much much lighter than this wasn't it the uk phraseology was um jvci advises a non-urgent offer so in the uk it's a non-urgent offer Whereas in the US, the terminology is should, and according to this article, vigorous. So very different approach between the UK and the US, I'm perceiving here. Uh, now, the Pfizer spokesman apparently said it did not de determine efficacy of this trial. So Pfizer aren't making claims based on this trial or this, this report, which was uh, that one. So to be fair, Pfizer were just reporting... Uh, the details there, which we uh, assume are facts, I'm not being satirical there, I, I, they, they will have published the facts there, um, or the, the facts that they wanted published. Um, but um, they're not making any great claims. It's the CDC that seem to be making the claims almost for them, which does seem a bit strange. So Advisory Committee on Immunisation and Practice, that's the group I was advising or educating on the nature of natural immunity. The vote was 11 to 1, so there must be 12. Uh, Dr Talbot was the dissenting voice, according to this article. Uh, vaccines are not without their potential side effects. Oh, right, according to Dr Talbot. Carrying out interventions on healthy children should have a robust evidence base. And um, it seems Dr Talbot wasn't satisfied that that was there, unlike the 11 members of the Advisory Committee on Immunisation Practice. And uh, Dr. Talbot also wondered if it was possible to keep doing this every six months, which, of course, um, would generate a lot of uh, income uh, in terms of vaccine purchasing. But how viable is that? And uh, Professor uh, McCarry also commented on natural immunity, as we have done many times on this article. Um, he noted with, I think it's fair to say, incredulity that... Um, CDC don't seem to, or, or at least the Advisory Committee on Immunisation practice don't seem to take into account 
natural immunity as much as he would like them to and as much as I would like them to. Um, and he concluded with this CDC data. From, and again, I've left the hyperlinks in here so you can click on them. From New York and California demonstrated that natural immunity was 2.8 times more effective in preventing hospitalizations, 3.3 to 4.7 times more effective in preventing COVID-19 infections compared to vaccination during the Delta wave. And we know that the, well, we, we, can, we can be fairly sure from adult data at least that uh, in Omicron, uh, there's many more, many, many, many more reinfections. I think it's about eight times more reinfections from ONS data. Uh, but, but thankfully, um, the, the, the protection against severe disease and hospitalisation is, is, uh, is more in the Omicron get less severe disease and hospitalisation in the current climate. So in terms of, um, in terms of, um, preventing hospitalizations we'll probably expect that to be higher with with omicron uh infections uh, but more reinfections with omicron which has a lot of vaccine escape so um as i say that's just an opinion piece make of it what you will um i've given you all that information there that i can find on the topic uh straight from the relevant uh, authorities great difference in tone between the united kingdom and the united states cdc's credibility i don't see it's been enhanced by um their current uh, current publications as as in, in terms of vaccinating children of this uh, age group but they do give counter argument read it and look at it for yourself and see what you think but I have question marks, and as we noticed as, as a separate topic, there's huge amounts of money involved in this. We'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.